Hey, my name is Psych Dota. I make videos and stream on Twitch to help Dota players that value strategy. I have a huge psychology background and have been working in the field for over four years. In this video, we'll be touching on concepts and theories that have never been applied to the game of Dota before. Have you ever wondered why pro teams have coaches that have little to none Dota experience or low MMR? I'll tell you why. It's because there is an extreme value in having a second set of eyes evaluating your play. It's a common fallacy to think we know ourselves better than the people closest to us, people who we play with, and our closest to us know us better than ourselves. If you don't believe me, I've cited a scientific article explaining it at the bottom of the video. So before we get into this video, let me ask you some questions to ponder about. What do you excel at in Dota? What are your weaknesses in the game? Do you have any bad habits? Here's a tip we all do. Do you know how to break those habits? What's your Dota? How do you play Dota? Are you playing to win? Or are you playing just to not lose? In this game and all the games I've played in my life, soccer, baseball, basketball, even chess, there's always been a component of a psychological struggle. Out of all of those games, I'd say Dota impacts me the most psychologically. In Dota, even from before they draft, the game can already be decided. Are you playing to win or are you playing just to try to not lose? Sometimes your hero pick and draft can force you into one of these options. But today we're going to be looking at someone playing to win. To quote one of the greatest chess players of all time, Bobby Fischer, he said, my greatest satisfaction comes from crushing the opponent's ego. We're going to be analyzing a player that I believe has this need, this desire, this satisfaction from just crushing someone. And that's our beloved Arteezy. Guys, we're in for a treat tonight. We are watching Arteezy play Mindaga against an invoker. And he is actually going in on this guy. What is he? What? What is he doing? He's just actually just bowling him. Like, can he not get a? Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. What is he, Blood. dude? This, this guy's a madman. Scorcher. This is actually a madman. He didn't get any triggers on that seventeen percent chance. If he did, like one or two times, then Invoker was dead for sure. Let's see how he plays this. He's taking this uh, range eight. I would just start. Okay, so he's actually spamming that Q out. Because he knows it's going to go under tower, so he's going to want to secure these last hits. Now he can trigger the 17%. Oh, that deny on the range creep from the Vulture. Okay. Of course, they trigger when you're trying to get the last hits on the creep, but never on the hero. Okay, let's see. What... So he's, he went double... he's going double null. No bottle. He's posturing very aggressively. Oh man, these last hits. Oh. I bet RTZ is getting a little bit triggered. I would be getting a little bit triggered. But every time he has a uh, mirror image up, 26 second on a 30 sec second cooldown, he can play aggressive. And yeah. Okay. So, it's very easy for him to fight for last set. That's why. Oh my gosh, look at this. He doesn't even care about it. I mean, he's gonna get some power damage on because of this. And he's gonna do this? Why? Look how aggressive he's playing on it. Wow. Maybe he was just sick and tired of him <laughs> getting those last hits. Like, what rank is this invoker? Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Rank 46, so Dyer's I don't. Has oh, been killed. Courier died to the tower. Oh man, our tour. Oh, that's that feels bad. He's just popping this out and just gonna run at him. If he gets this stun, if he can body block, no, not gonna happen. 
Twenty-seven ten CS to ten nine. Dire structures are fortified. It's huge, man. <laughs> he can just run at him. This is actually hilarious. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. And this um, siege creep is just doing work. Like, he just did half the health of the tower, and he's gonna get the kill on this. Oh. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. So now that he knows Bibi is here, I'm expecting the right when these are about to leave them. He just keeps his hero there. So they're just basically doing. Oh, that's a very huge note to do. Um, he killed that creep. The second it respawned, he killed it again. That's efficiency right there. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Okay, let's see this illusion uh, micro. Arc from Arcusi God. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. I mean, they're just completely zoning them Boker out. Like, I know it seems insignificant, Dyer's but tower has the um, tower damage is just adding up now. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Guess a ghost walk out of there. I didn't realize he can play this aggressive on an Naga Siren. This will I mean, come in handy. He's been standing between Radiance us. Middle Tower is under attack. Creepway, if he sees a uh, panda come in, is he level six? He is level six, so now he's going into the jungle. She's invoker TV mid too. So Arteezy's team, I mean, he just dominated the lane. <laughs> gotcha. Oh my gosh, is he gonna have to go swap, pick it out? Does he even have the mana? I think this guy's dead if he doesn't have a ghost walk. Yep, yep, he's dead. Okay. Well, now RTZ. Oh, almost shoot. He's gonna have to sign. There's a catapult here. That's 11 minutes. They need to defend this tower. It's not his job. It's somebody else's job. He has no HP. Man, at this. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. That. that it's really unfortunate that his team is not is just letting him take me terrific. This how he wants I think he pings us for the Enigma to black hole him, not the invoker, because this panda is gonna do a lot more damage. Um, Knowing when the fight turns sour and where you, and when you should just be start farming. That that's just good game sense. He's giving Arteezy is giving his whole team like they know exactly where they are. They're literally here. In this space right here. Just of how he's farming over here. And he's not dying. And he's taking all this farm away from the enemy team. So they are only stuck in their triangle, and this may be this, this camp. It will be a two-part series, and in the next video, we'll analyze playing, just trying not to lose. Connell, Hugh O'Donnell, Alexander, a cryptanalysis, who worked on the German Enigma machine during the Second World War, and was an international master chess player. He said that it is ten times harder to defeat an opponent who is playing not to lose than it was to defeat an opponent who's playing to win himself. My next video will see how that relates to the game of Dota. So, thank you everyone for watching. Like and subscribe if you choose to for more content. You can find me on Twitch. All of that information will be posted down below this uh, video. If you're looking for an edge in your game, reach out for free replay analysis and coaching focused on psychology to get you to those 200 IQ big brain plays. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.